YouTube. So be sure to be part of this conversation. Now today on Kickstarter, we'll be talking about the exit of Madam Jennifer Musisi from KCCA. Of course, on the 15th of this month, she tendered her resignation and the last day in office will be on the 15th of December. But what does this mean for KCCA? What's the way forward for them and also we saw quite um, confident people coming out to um, you know put allegations that maybe she could have been corrupt during her tenure in office and that she needs to account for all the money that she handled during the seven years and a half she was the leader of the KCCA. So we'll break that down for you and in studios to help us do just that is Mr. God Godba to Mushabe, who is a policy analyst. Thank you so much for making time. Thank you, Malaka. Good morning. You're welcome. Yeah. Now, we'll start off with taking a look at some of your views on her exit and what you had to say um, with regards to her leadership under KCCA. Let's take a look. Workout modalities of handling all accountability issues. It's not a matter of throwing away, the, throwing, uh, I mean, the, throwing in the towel and you run away. No way. No, you should have to first up. It has got a legacy in the leadership of our country. One, uh, it is, it's an eye opener that leaders can come. They are good leaders who, who can come and go. So those are the views that we had from mm. members of the public, of course, with the Kampala Lord Mayor, Mr. Arias Lukwago, making allegations that she needs to account for all the monies. But for you as a policy analyst, did you see this coming? I actually thought that uh, this could have happened earlier. Uh, first of all, I think Jennifer CC has, uh, in my view, has done a commendable job at KCCA. Uh, given the political environment in which she has to operate, I think that uh, Jennifer CC is, is one committed woman who thought she could make a difference and I think put all her energy in her work in spite of all the failures uh, that could accompany such a, a, a career which all of us have as individuals. Uh, I think that uh, for, from 2016 it became apparent that the, the politics of KCCA uh, was going to, to, to be dominant given, the, the, given what we saw in, 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 in the capital city here in terms of elections. Uh, and, and of course, Jen from C also also came out as more of a technical person, uh, fair and disciplined in terms of like, this is my technical work that I need to do and accomplish results in spite of all the harabaru uh, around this job, which is really highly political. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that uh, uh, I, I would disagree with the Lord Mayor. Uh, on the idea that you know you can't just throw in the towel and jump out, I I wouldn't take Jen from CC's resignation as jumping out. I mean, if you are a if you are a professional, someone who believes in doing work and performing, and you find that the context within which you are operating is complicated, I mean, the the smartest thing for you to do is to resign. Mm -hmm. uh, the standard practice in Uganda here yeah, that people just keep there, either they complain or they keep quiet. So I would just say, uh, if Jen from CC considered her tenure, uh, considered the work she's doing, considered the difficulties uh, environment within which to operate, and she realized she cannot operate as a professional, then the best thing for her was to resign. And 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 I think the Lord Mayor has uh, definitely has uh, a right to express those opinions, but uh, as a matter of fact, she has been there for I think she has been in this job for seven years. Right. Um, so if there are any wrong things that she has done, they definitely could have come up and and she would have been put to task to to account. And even when you are even when you've left a job, definitely you can always be called upon to account. So I, I don't see. Uh, I think that uh, the Lord Mayor is not being fair to her by saying you can't jump out and I think she should if she if she feels that she can't perform the job that she's assigned to do. She actually cited political interference from the political wing of KCCA as one of the reasons as to why she was stepping down. Do you feel like it's the same reason um, that the Kampala Festival City Festival was actually suspended this year a month ago? I mean, uh, it's, uh, we don't have, uh, you know, credible information on why it was suspended. The reasons that were given about money were really not sound enough for, for someone who has followed the festival, who follows the goings-on in KCCA, and then 
the the fact that uh, you know the the whole idea of the people power movement has been emerging and 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 therefore if you are a politician who are worried, who is worried about this uh, resurgence of citizenship expressed in people power you really don't want to give uh, the people power the opportunity to organize and mobilize and manifest itself in the Kampala festival because that could have happened and and therefore we can only speculate that the the rise of the people power movement is probably one of the major reasons why the festival was cancelled because the the reasons about funding and div diverting funds to do uh, you know health work and others really are not definitely convincing mm. yeah okay yeah. all right we were looking at kcca and the milestones it has been able to make under the leadership of madam musisi mm. and People have been asking, then she has gone down. Who will take up the mantle <laughs> next as a policy analyst? If you just look at that terrain, mm. who do you feel would take up that particular position? No, no first of all, my, I think I, uh, I had one of the clips where Jen from CC said, If I knew this is what this job is like, she I wouldn't have taken, have taken it. it. Mm -hmm. And I thought that uh, at, at, uh, that clip, if she didn't know that that job was a political job with a lot of political maneuvering, I think then uh, she didn't really uh, read the signals very well because anybody who is coming into KCC and knows the politics that revolves around the uh, Kampala Capital City Authority. And, and secondly, uh, the, the configuration, the institutional configuration of KCCA is designed not necessarily to deliver services but to deal with the politics of the day. Because you don't need a Lord Mayor with a host of councillors, and then I think right now they have two ministers, and then you have an executive director. It's absolutely unnecessary, uh, and, uh, and, and it, doesn't, it doesn't serve the purpose of running an efficient cost-effective authority now anybody wanting to take over that job must be alive to the fact that the job of a KCC executive director is highly is highly political is highly controversial so in fact you need a, a, an iron lady type Jen from CC who just decides to cut the bull to cut through the bull hmm. and say I am going to do this the moment the I, I think Jen from CC's problems started ima emerging once the president withdrew the political support and the political cover that he gave her. Uh, you you need a lot of political cover from the president who runs the kinds of politics that he runs in the country and 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 uh, and, and the KCC. So in, in short, uh, right now the replacement for Jen from CC, uh, if you are a professional. Who wants to do your job professionally alive to the politics you have to be conscious that you have to play certain games uh, to be able to get the different political interests together and I think Jen from CC didn't succeed in doing that mm -hmm. I am not sure that there is anybody actually who will succeed doing that but you can also come in and play to the uh, to the to the president's bidding because the president has a po political interest in cases here, but, and 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 I would just add that if, yes. again, if I was uh, if I was offered this job, I would be looking at the the recent uh, cash bonanza in town. The president moving around, distributing money around town, and they say the president is deeply invested and interested in cases here. So do I want to play ball, or do I want to run? the affairs of, of KCC as a professional. Critics yeah. actually say that uh, the downfall of uh, Madame Musisi actually started when she started playing those games that you're talking about, being involved in the politics of KCC. Don't you feel so? I, I really don't think so. I, I think that uh, uh, when Musisi came to the office, uh, she stuck to really doing a couple of things. She, yeah, she tried to play, uh, you know, more or less to, to the powers that be. Uh, I think at some point uh, you could feel like she was trying to alienate the Lord Mayor. And as long as she tried to do that, definitely, uh, probably the, the powers that be feel comfortable. And as she established her position and became more professional in terms of doing her job, uh, probably ignoring not only the the politics from the KCC, KCC itself mm. but also from the central government i, I think that created a, a very very uh, uncomfortable 
uh, uh, situation and then when you get the results of the 2016 elections where the president performs pr pretty badly even when the the process was bungled up by the electoral commission you really see that uh, yeah if you are a president who is more interested in the in the politics and the votes than the quality of the capital city you are going to have to f deal with that situation and exactly yeah. that's the same thing yeah. we saw 2016 and uh, the president was actually blaming her for her style of leadership to yeah. the reason as to why he didn't garner enough votes in Kampala yeah. but the question is she also deemed she wasn't a favorite of the urban poor as we call them especially the traders because we've been seeing them um, engaging in running battles in the city you know and People were saying that it's okay, you can chase them away, but mm. give them an alternative. As a mm. policy analyst, how best sh would she have handled that front? Yeah, no, no I think that I, I would never want to see a, a, a capital city which is you which is uh, which is barricaded from the citizens because you want a city that belongs to the citizens but a city that is organized where everybody feels proud and feels inclusive now i would uh, i would argue and say that uh, um, i think there are so many things that can be done in the capital city where the the citizens the residents of kampala the the the, the people downtown feel like we are part of this city so you you have to create uh, different uh, public private partnerships if you think of the markets for example what if one was able to start to establish a special purpose vehicle for developing this market and each of and everybody every member of the market the market woman the market vendor is given an opportunity to buy shares and and these are small things because when you do, when you establish a company shares can even go for up to 10,000 shillings right. and therefore me as a market vendor I can buy my five shares 50,000 and I am an owner I have an a stake in this uh, special purpose vehicle so there there are a range of policy instruments and business instruments or economic instruments that you can use to organize the city but in an inclusive way uh, i think uh the, the 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 downtown people who are really the the owners and the and the owners and, and the stakeholders of this city were mixed up also in the politics mm. uh, so Jen from CC and his team I don't think they were given the opportunity to organize the town as a business where there is inclusivity I think they had to organize the town but also deal with the politics uh, because I, I think that uh, if, if I was president I would want to give the capital city authority the leverage to come with instruments of like how do you make sure that you transform this town into a modern city where I can see my people, the voters or the people that I lead, being the centerpiece of that transformation. Right. Yeah. And she actually alluded to the fact that people coming into Kampala every single day during the day amount to 4.5 million. Mm. And them that are here during the night is around 2 million. Yeah. How can we plan for such, uh, and, and these numbers keep on growing on a day-to-day -day basis. So mm. even for the person who will come over and above her living, how are we to control these numbers in the capital city? No, but we can't control them because, first of all, rural urban migration is a, is a, a real phenomenon. Uh, you you can't you can't control rural urban migration because there are attractions even even in primary school i'm sure you studied about things what, what attracts people to the urban centers right. so that is a, that's a given secondly i think that uh, yes urbanization is actually a, a is actually a pathway to development and transformation so smart countries organize and plan urbanization and i don't think that there is there are limitations in terms of policy and economic instruments that you can use to organize a city the the important thing is to understand what is the development objective of organizing and transforming this city do you want to develop a city where everybody is excluded or everybody is included and that's what i was the point i was making is that if you are a planning authority of kcc you are focused on these are the different instruments that you can use or that you are going to use to make sure that you are transform the city away with inclusiveness and and i think the the the, the instruments are actually broad right yeah they, they are economic they are they are they are policy 
they are tax. So they, they, they are they are all there, and, and I don't think that uh, we may not have time to go through all of them. Yeah. But uh, the the challenge for cases, I think, for Jen from CC, someone who was trying to transform this city, is having to to massage the political egos of the different actors from the from the presidency to the ministers mm -hmm. to the uh, to the capital city authority itself uh, okay. i think to balance those is really is the magic bullet that you may need and and anybody coming into kcca if you really have to do something meaningful you really have to figure out whether you have the skills to balance the egos okay yeah. and we'll get back to that uh, later on and i'm joined by madam keto nyampendi who is um the assistant auditor general here in the country good morning madam good morning good morning good morning how are you i'm fine thank you thank you so much for joining us this morning now the question uh -huh. that many uh -huh. are asking is we of course saw madam musisi tender her resignation on monday and this was followed with a lot of allegations case in study um we so the Kampala Lord Mayor, Mr. Arias Lukwago, together with the Honorable Mubarak Munyagwa, the Kawempe South Member of Parliament, saying that Madam Musisi has to account for all the monies that passed through her during her seven and a half year tenure in office. Do you feel like these allegations hold water? Uh, Madam Musisi has uh, been as, uh, as head of KCCA. Uh, she has been doing her secondary duty in relation to accountability. She has headed the institution and has given accountability as required by government. As head of the institution, she's been responsible for the accounting department and the whole leadership role and the whole governance board. And for us, from the Auditor General's office, she has been providing us with whatever we need to ensure that we do our oversight role over her. And she has done well. Uh, she moved the institution from a state of where it had a disclaimer of opinion to where it had a clean opinion. And she worked very, very well with our office to ensure that we moved the, her, 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 her organization from a state of accountability, uh, uh, from a lower state to a much, much higher state. Uh, so, uh, from our point of view in the Office of the OEP General, Madame Mutisi has done a great job and uh, we, we just wish her well where she's going. Okay, and with regards to these particular allegations, because the Kampala Lord Mayor said that even if she leaves office, they will be sure to follow through with that. So from the point of the Auditor General's office, how will you be able to help her out with regards to just putting out evidence that she was compliant throughout her tenure? Okay, we are, we are currently executing the, the audit of uh, the audit of 2017 18 that is the audit that she has, uh, the, the financial year that has just ended. She's living in December. So whatever is, is there that she has to account for for that financial year, she would have accounted by the time she lives in December. Then the six months before she leaves, the six months from uh, June 18 to December 18, that will be audited later. But still, if there is an issue, definitely as a, as a person, she will be called upon to answer. But um, it is the accounting officer who will be there in place who is supposed to ensure that the account. But I will also add that given that we have had a good record, uh, we have already had uh, the, the coming in of the, the current audit. This is a good record. Uh, I think that the allegation. Uh, and we will wait to see what the allegations are resulting into. We use all that information, by the way, when we are carrying out audits, because our ears are on the ground at any one moment. So by December 2018, if there is anything, the Auditor General will always raise it. Okay, but as at now, she's clean. A very Okay. Thank you so much, Madam Ketonya Pendi Kayemba, who is the Assistant General um, at the Office of the Auditor General. Thank you so much for making time this morning. Back in studios, KCCA.
She has, uh, Madam Musisi has been the backbone of it all. We remember how Kampala used mm. to look like before she came yeah. into office. She came in, she was an iron lady, very tough, never feared, even with the former Lord Mayor. <laughs> I, there were wrangles there. Mm. So, what are we likely to see with regards to the management of KCC in the coming days? Uh, first of all, just reflect on one point that you raised, because I think the characterization of what the Lord Mayor said as an allegation is, for me, a wrong characterization, because allegations are normally specific. My, my view is that what the Lord Mayor said is an expression of an opinion, uh, and I think it's a legitimate opinion. Uh, you know, for you, you are thinking that oh, some things may have not have gone right. right. So I think right now, what the Lord Mayor said, characterizing it as an allegation, is uh, is really a wrong characterization because, as far as I'm concerned, there are no specific allegations that uh, Jen from CC mishandled or uh, uh, didn't account for any finances or assets of the authority. So I, I, that would be, you know, uh, talking about this really specifically from a purely legal perspective. Right. But but in terms of uh, what we see coming ahead. I, I think that uh, there, there's still an opportunity because uh, uh, if you read Jen from Sissi's letter, the, his, uh, her resignation letter, uh, one of the humbling uh, uh, attributes of it was to say, we were able to do this. In Uganda, people are used to say, I, I, uh, I did this, I accomplished <laughs> this, I did this. I think that, uh, you know, I, I found it quite humbling for her to be, uh, to be speaking in terms of an institution called C KCCA, which means that she recognizes the contributions made by all her colleagues, so she, she's running a team. Right. So in other words, her departure... If, if she has built a team the way she expressed in the letter, it means that that team actually continues to pursue almost a, a similar agenda. The new CEO only brings in some new innovations and some new ingenuity in terms of how business is done. Then you know that KCCA is growing as an institution, and I think that uh, that would be the desirable uh, okay. situation. So they'll be fine. Yeah, they should be fine. All right. Yeah. So today we expect a special council sitting today, and this will be with the Lord Mayor, Mr. Yeah. Arias Lukwago, together with some councillors. Mm -hmm. And the uh, key of the discussion will be the rebranding of KCCA together with appraising all the workers. But with mm -hmm. the rebranding, as we come to a close in one minute, mm -hmm. do you feel it's we need that? I don't know what is being rebranded because uh, what KCC should be doing is to do its work, deliver services to the people of Kampala, right. transform this town. That is its branding, and, and I don't think that you need to start uh, going for for promotions and that kind of stuff. I, uh, uh, I that, that's not for for technical government agencies. Government agencies do their work. When they do their work, actually the branding come to, comes out of that, the recognition and the appreciation from the taxpayers. Okay. This guy comes out of the quality of the work, of the services you are able to deliver. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much for your input, Mr. Godbert Tumushabe, who is yeah. a policy analyst. Thank you so much for making time. That has yeah. been the discussion. Keep your views coming. The hashtag is morning at NTV. That's on Twitter. You can also stream us live and drop in your comments. NTV Uganda, that's on Facebook. Facebook and YouTube. Morning at NTV still continues. Up next is Reality on the Ground with Andrew Chamagero. Keep it here. You're watching Morning at NTV. Anya Gange, Zem Kuye Patrick, Ndudengako Sevi Duka, Kakati, Nalimu Morokanga and Tambula. Driver na atuka mukona, yari aduka nyu, teyasala kumisindi. Na asange moro keindala. Okugeza ako, okujivira, 